Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country, Wild Smart. The following is a presentation of Radio Alabama Sports. This broadcast is copyrighted by Radio Alabama for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast, descriptions, or accounts of the game without Radio Alabama's consent is strictly prohibited. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 1045. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Now, let's join Jacob Goins and Christian Griffin. Our first true glimpse of summer here at John Mills Field this afternoon as it's just about time to put away the jackets, the beanies, and the hand warmers and go deep into that closet, pull out the sunscreen, the coolers, and those frog togs. But despite the heat and the humidity, the first base dugout could not get any hotter. It's senior day here at John Mills Field between the visiting Springwood Wildcats and your Lee Scott Warriors. When we come back, we'll highlight those seniors a little bit. We'll talk about the rest of the regular season and we'll get you those starting lineups. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Let's get back to the game. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. Welcome back to John Meals Field here in Auburn, Alabama. A picture perfect day for senior day here for Lee Scott Academy. A hot day, but here can't ask for anything better. Just some really soft clouds in the sky, and it's just about time. For baseball, as we welcome you into the Russell Building Supply Countdown to First Pitch, brought to you by Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply. Experience and knowledge from the pros at your hometown home center. Let's dive into these seniors just a little bit while we have a moment before the home plate meeting. There's six seniors on the roster this afternoon. We'll start with Brandon Martin. It's his seventh year playing baseball at Lee Scott Academy. He will be attending Auburn University next year, studying chemistry. So not only athletic at the hot corner, uses that brain in the classroom as well. Jack McKay, it's his sixth season here at Lee Scott Academy. He will also be attending Auburn University next season. J.D. Burns is playing his fourth season at Lee Scott Academy next year. He will be attending Southern Union with plans of going to Auburn a year after that. Lane Eddins in his second season with the Warriors as well playing today. He will also be attending Southern Union following the conclusion of this school year. And there's two Warriors playing at the next level. First is Jake Cummings with his third season at Lee Scott. Next year, he will be going to Chat Valley, a really, really talented community college, especially for those arms that he has. I know a couple of good buddies that went there. So going to going to Chat Valley and Garrett West rounding out those seniors his second season here at Lee Scott Academy. He will be playing ball at Reed State following the conclusion of this year, but there's still a whole lot of baseball to be played and a whole lot of school left 
And we're hoping that those two things kind of intertwine together. We continue to be able to play baseball. But it's the final regular season game here at John Meals Field. We're having the home plate meeting. We'll go ahead and take one more final break before we get you those lineups. We'll have the prayer and the national anthem all during that break. But don't go anywhere. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with local attention. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Homegrown and member we love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. 
From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Now, the starting lineups brought to you by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price on your LSA Sports Station, Tiger Country 1045. Welcome back to John Meals Field on the campus of Lee Scott Academy. It's senior day here at John Meals Field, a picture perfect day for baseball. And as those teams, or as Lee Scott rather, is making their way to the field, let's get you those starting lineups presented by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price. We'll start with the visiting Springwood Wildcats. It'll be Revis, Johnson, and Mosley. One, two, and three. Sides, King, and Carden. Round out the middle. And Hill, Lauderdale, and Johnson. Round out seven, eight, and nine. Setting the defense for the Lee Scott Warriors. Starting in the grass. It'll be Burns, Martin, and McKay. Going from left to center in the diamond. It'll be Butler, Hardy, Reeves, and Jackson. Lane Eddins gets the start behind the dish. And number 19, senior Garrett West gets the start on the mound. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Lee Scott Sports Network. Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. Another spe special thank you to Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olean Price. He reminds you that if you need services from her office, there's the main office at the courthouse in Opelika and satellite offices in Auburn and Smith Station. A really good ceremony for all six of the seniors for Lee Scott here this afternoon playing their final regular season game at John Meals Field. Hopefully not there their last complete, but their last regular season. As we are just about ready for first pitch, the first inning of today's broadcast is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Warrior Baseball. Again, it'll be Revis Johnson and Mosley due up for the Wildcats. Garrett West on the mound for the Warriors. And senior to senior, delivers a first pitch strike to get the game underway. Goes with the off speed. That one misses upstairs. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Warriors in their home whites. Warriors along the chest, their navy caps with LSA. That fastball runs in on the hands of Revis. Springwood. And they're visiting Reds with Springwood along the chest in their white pants as well. That fastball painted on the outer half for a called strike two. The 2-2. Two -two. It's a fastball swung on and missed. Garrett West picks up his first strikeout of the afternoon. Nice way of getting senior day started for number 19 on the mound. So quickly. One away here in the top half of the first inning. Christian Griffin here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. First pitch off speed to Eli Johnson. He takes for ball one. Johnson playing shortstop in today's contest. Comes up empty on that one. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. West, the 1-1 one, one delivery. Fastball painted on the knees for a strike two. West getting that ball, getting on the rubber, and firing the 1-2 is an off-speed off the cap of the bat. It'll be fouled down by the right side. And we'll do it again.
And he comes up, empty does Johnson on the one-two fastball. Two up, two down via the K for Garrett West on the mound. And that'll bring up Brandon Mosley to the right-handed batter's box. That lively fastball from West. Showing once again here this afternoon. First pitch swinging, and Mosley comes up empty. Same pitch, same result. Mosley now in a hole, no balls, and two strikes. The 0-2 goes right back to the fastball, and Mosley comes up empty. Garrett West strikes out the side in the top half of the first inning. Not a bad start to your senior day afternoon. We head to the home half of the first. Lee Scott looking to strike first here on senior day at John Meals Field. We'll be back in one minute on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. What's up? It's made oh. for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. It's Lee Scott Baseball Game Time. The first inning is brought to you by Auburn Bank on Tiger Country 104.5. Garrett West strikes out the side in the top half of the first inning. Warriors looking to get things going in their home half. It'll be Garrett West, Ethan Hardy, Sam Jackson, one, two, three. J.D. Burns, Jake Cummings, and Lane Eddins, the middle four, five, and six. Pelzer Reeves, Brandon Martin, and Braden Butler round out the lineup. Jack McKay will not make his way to the play, but he is in right field this afternoon for the Warriors. A reminder that today's broadcast is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you, and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Warrior Baseball. And again, we've talked about the heat and the humidity. Not really in comparison to those boys in the first base dugout. Winners in their last 19 contests. And yes, you heard that. You heard that correctly. 19 straight wins for the Warriors as they enter play today, outscoring their opponents 200 to 10 in that 19-game win streak. That is dominance on the mound. That is dominance at the plate. That is dominance in just, just, just about every aspect of the game for the Warriors. 14 shutouts in that win streak, including 11 straight contests, not surrendering a run. It'll be Tucker Sides on the mound. For the Wildcats, starting in the outfield, it'll be King, Johnson, and Carden. And then around the Diamond Hill, Johnson, Revis, and Mosley. Russell Lauderdale gets to start behind the dish. As Garrett West waits a pitch number one from Tucker Sides. That one misses low and away, so we're underway here in the home half of the first inning. Christian Griffin, and in about 20 seconds, Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball, especially on this beautiful, beautiful senior day here at John Meals Field. That fastball misses upstairs. West ahead of the count. Two balls and no strikes. Long pause on the mound. Awaits the 2-0. That one misses outside as well. West ahead in the count. Three balls and no strikes. 
It's good, man. Glad to have you here. Yes, yes. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate you getting everything going on as I wrapped up wrapped up my show just a few minutes ago. And hey, I got here as quickly as possible. I promise you that. I didn't want to miss. Definitely didn't want to miss a day like today, man. It's special to be to be back at least, Scott, and and watch the Warriors try to get get a little something done here, continue a winning streak, and honor uh, a good group of seniors on this squad, man. It's it's been an honor to call them over the last couple of years, and and man, excited to be here today. A three zero down the middle, taken all the way. The three two misses outside. So West will get things started for the Warriors with a leadoff walk. And there it is. We'll, we'll run over the numbers again right before you got here. I was talking about that streak, 19 straight for the Warriors. And, again, it does not matter it's who absurd, you are playing. Man. It does not matter the competition, which we'll call a spade a spade. It has not been up to the level of Lee Scott. But, again, regardless, you're playing baseball. Such a humbling game. If you don't play the game the right way, it will come back to haunt you. But head coach Jared Cook is doing just about everything right he can in the dugout. And he said it a couple weeks ago that the boys are seeing the fruits of their labor. It's starting to pay off as that pitch from Ethan Hardy is fouled straight back, outscoring their opponents in even 200 to 10. 14 shutouts in 11 straight games without surrendering a run. So no, no pressure, Garrett, as you're on the yeah. mound. Yeah. See, I get yelled at when I say things like that. The 0-1 runners off and running. Pitch is low, and Easton Gregory with a head first slide. A little bit of a face plan at the second base bag, but he will make it in there safely nonetheless. Doesn't matter how pretty it is. That's right. Just like a single in the score column, you'll take a line drive, just like you'll take a bloop, you'll take a stolen base, even if your face comes up with a little bit of dirt in it. Well, it's it's something that Lee Scott has done all year, and I'm hoping that they continue to do in postseason time come about next week when they just they put so much pressure and aggression on the base paths. If you walk somebody, give up a hit, you get – you you have to earn that guy and get him off of the base pads if you're Lee Scott's opponents. And if you allow him to get on base, you're going to have to worry about him until you literally get him out or watch him come across home plate. And that was a correction. That 1-0 pitch to Ethan Hardy was called a strike, so the count even at one apiece. That one misses in the dirt and a really good dirt ball read from Easton Gregory. He'll make his way to third base without a throw. And then again, there it is, just the – the efficiency on the base paths is something that we've talked about and I've highlighted specifically all years. There's four aspects to every game on the mound, at the plate, in the field, and on the bases. And if there's one highlight other than the pitching, it's the ability that Lee Scott has had moving runners over as that pitch was neck high, but called strike to even the count at two and two. Just something that we've seen right there, just a dirt ball, the ability to take the extra 90 feet, and just like that, a walk, a stolen base, and a pass ball. And you have a runner 90 feet away looking to get the first tally on the board. That 2-2 is lifted into shallow right center field. A little miscommunication, and nobody's catching it. That ball's going to drop. Easton Gregory will make his way home safely. I don't know if the right fielder, again, this time of day, might have lost it in the sun a little bit, but there was zero communication between the right fielder, the center fielder, and the second baseman. And we talked about that bloop single that you'll take nonetheless. And just like that, Easton Hardy makes his way standing on second base. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He is still on first base for the Warriors with the RBI single. Well, I think it was, yeah, I think it was C.J. Johnson in center. It was Wes Carter in right, and they both looked at Dylan Rivas, the second baseman, wearing number one in red, and they were just assuming he was going to go up and make that play, and everybody watched it. By the time anybody decided to go and make a play, it was way too late. First pitch. This is outside, and Ethan Hardy stands second base, standing up. You hear couple of yells from the dugout telling him to get down. The 1-0. Two Sam Jacksons in on the inner half to even the count at one apiece. Another runner in scoring position. For the Lee Scott first baseman. And again, a, a beautiful ceremony for the seniors, deservingly so. All six of them for Lee Scott. 1-1 one, one is lifted foul down by the first base. Hitting barn. That was a good pitch to Sam Jackson. He wanted it. Just got a little behind it and unable to get a barrel on it cleanly, but... 
you can't throw you can't throw fastballs to him too often because he's got he's got the power to to do some damage, especially with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. The one two fastball misses upstairs. Lauderdale has to come out of his crouch. Evens the count at two and two. One nothing your score here at John Meals Field. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. And a look down over at the softball field. Sam. Lee Scott Warriors look to be in control four to nothing in the third inning. Off and running was Hardy, but that ball is ripped foul down the third base bag. Today, again, just going through them, you'll hear their name quite a few, quite a bit today. Brandon Martin, Jack McKay, J.D. Burns, Lane Eddins, Jake Cummings, and Garrett West, the gentleman that had their ceremony for them here this afternoon. The, the Warriors, both pun intended and no pun intended, for, for this Warriors team, you can't have a great team without a foundation. And these guys have built that foundation. They've created the support. And again, during, the, during some of those tough times where you're going to have to lean on a few guys, you're going to have to mm-hmm. have some guys that create a little bit more pressure on everybody else. But I mean, you're seeing, again, the fruits of their labor. You're seeing the success that this team has had. As that fastball misses upstairs, Coach Cook was talking about it. It's simply just the we over me mentality that this team has had the entire year. And and he would be lying to you. We would both be lying to you if we said that it didn't start with those fourth-year guys, those seniors that were highlighted this afternoon. The 3-2 to Sam Jackson. Is fouled straight back off the bricks, and we'll do it again the full count. It's... It's the seniors that you are hoping in a series like this when the regular season's coming down the line, right, coming down to the final few games. It's these types of guys that you hope step up, have been here before, and ultimately get you where you want to be in the postseason and then get you through that postseason coming up starting next week. 3-2 misses down in the dirt. And Ethan Hardy timed up Tucker's sides perfectly. He was going the one look and then picking up the leg and firing – to home, he steals third without a throw. So runners now on the corners for J.D. Burns. Burns, his fourth year here at Lee Scott Academy. Heard earlier for his first year, will be attending Southern Union with hopes of transferring to Auburn after that year. First pitch to Burns is in the dirt and a delayed steal and it works to a T. Not a pun for this past weekend. That was good right there. Did you like that one? That was okay. That was all right. you you've had better. You've had better. So runners now at second and third. Still nobody out in a one nothing game. That ball off the cap of the bat. A couple Warriors reaching for it. As it hits the dugout fence foul. Again, a beautiful day here at John Meals Field. That blue fence looking good as ever. The field, the trees behind them now in full bloom. 1-1. Misses down in the dirt. Good stop from Lauderdale to keep both runners at bay. A little warmer than it's been the last couple of times we've been out here. Starting to get, we're getting into that weather where Alabama decides, do we want to stay in the winter or do we want to just go straight to summer? Trying to figure out what it wants to do and, here recently, man, especially this weekend. It's been sunny skies, but you get in that truck in the middle of the day, and it's it's a little warmer than it's been the last few weeks. The 2-1. This is eye level for ball three, and that's something that I was talking about in the open. You can finally put the jackets back on or back in the closet, we hope so, where we're pulling out the sunscreen and the I don't know. The coolers. I'm cool with this. With I'm, I'm happy with weather. it, too. I mean, today was the first day that I had to I walked to my truck to crank my truck before I wanted to get in it at 3-1. Line to center field on a hop. Makes the catch, does Johnson. But it'll be more than a job as Ethan Hardy comes in to score from third. So give J.D. Burns the sacrifice fly. As Jake Cummings makes his way to the right-handed batter's box for his first 
plate appearance of the afternoon. 2 nothing your score here in the home half of the first inning. Warriors and Wildcats. Nice play from Johnson in center field. Had to get up for it and misread it a little bit. He, he was very calm and, and played it the entire way, and then the very last second realized, oh, no, and was able to jump up and make an athletic play, and Johnson able to get the grab. But Warriors do bring the run around anyway, and they've got a 2 nothing lead here in the first frame. That line drive right at you, speaking from experience in center field, was the first pitch to Cummings misses. In the dirt is the hardest play to read in baseball, in my opinion, and, and in just about any outfielder's opinion. You're not sure whether to break in on it or to play in your feet or to start backing up. And as you mentioned, Johnson broke in initially and had to go back and make a full leap to catch it. Otherwise, these runners would still be on the move. I describe it sort of like a, a soccer goalie where on a PK where you've got to make your mind up as soon as the play happens and you've just got to stick with it because by the time you try to readjust, it's too late and you, you've misplayed it already. And, and unless you're just athletic like, like Johnson is, it's really, really hard to make up for it. I believe that's going to be – Should be. Should be a balk. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a good call. It is. That's a great call by the home plate umpire. It wasn't much besides was trying to bait – Sam Jackson at, at second base and 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 twitched his shoulders to try and get him almost faking as if he was going to pitch to the mound, but his leg didn't come with him. And a really good call, really heads up play by the home umpire. We give credit where it's due. We might criticize at times, but when it's when it's the correct call and when it's when it's something like that where you see him take charge initially, we will definitely give him his flowers. Well, it's also something you don't often see from the home plate umpire. Most balks are called by the infield umpire because he's staring right back at him and looking at the pitcher. But no, that's a great call, and and it brings out brings out Springwood's coaching staff to talk to to sides for a second. And and yeah, Lee Scott's going to be the beneficiary of it. And and again, in control, two nothing, just one away. You got runners on the base pass, and it's been been an active game so far for the Warriors with the bats in their hand. Started with Garrett West. And a 1-2-3 top half of the first, striking out the side. He led things off in the home half with a walk. Ethan Hardy with an RBI single. Sam Jackson with a walk. And then J.D. Burns with a sacrifice fly. The 1-1 one, one, to Jake Cummings gets by the catcher, Lauderdale. But nothing doing, so we'll do it again. The 2-1 from sides to Cummings. Is ripped to the second baseman. He a diving glove or diving attempt goes underneath the glove of Revis at second. Goes into right field. Sam Jackson will score and give Jake Cummings an RBI single. Warriors in control now, three to zero. Lane Eddins, first pitch, swinging fouls one straight off his counterpart behind the plate. Lane Eddins in his second season with Lee Scott Academy, also attending Southern Union once the conclusion of this school year is complete. The fastball. Gets through the wickets of Lauderdale behind the plate. Cummings will advance 90 feet. And just like that, another runner in scoring position for the Warriors. Timely hitting, taking advantage of mistakes, heads up base running, things that Lee Scott just does so, so well. And, and something that I think head coach Cook has really brought to this team and brought to this program and elevated it to, to, to levels that I haven't seen in a while. And it's really fun to watch and it just gives you such an advantage moving into the late post or late regular season and, and into postseason moving forward. Well again it's just looking looking at our score sheet. Garrett West led things off with a walk and then you see an RBI single. 
And it wasn't like an RBI triple that split the gap. It was a, a single as that ball is ripped foul. It'll even the count at two and two. Right, the single from but Hardy. But again, a, a single from Hardy, but it just goes back to it. Garrett West walks, then you get Easton Gregory to pinch run for him. A stolen base and a pass ball. Then all of a sudden, even just a routine ground ball at second mm -hmm. and two batters in, you already have that one nothing advantage. And if you're able to do that just two or three times a game, I mean, it's a difference in a 4-4 game and a 7-4 game. I mean, that is that is crucial coming late regular season and postseason. Jay Cummings was off and running. This ball is lifted into center field. Johnson comes able to make the grab. But Cummings put that ball. The ball floated a little bit more yeah, than did. I thought it did. I thought yeah. it was going to bring Johnson back a little more, but it hung up in the air a little bit longer. But Jay Cummings was able to make his way back to second base. So two away here in the home half of the third inning for Pelzer Reeves. And as you look at the scorecard, you brought it up. One of the things I love in baseball is when a team, when you're able to hit a basically a fly ball like that from late ends, but it was J.D. Burns earlier in the sack fly. You pop it up. The defense got what they wanted, but you still scored. First pitch swinging is Pelzer Reeves. That's going to one-hop Johnson in center field. That ball gets over the head of the cutoff man. So... Cummings will score without a throw. Pelzer Reeves will make his way to second base on the error from Johnson in center field. And just like that, first pitch swing, 4 nothing Warriors here in the home half of the first inning. Even if the throw was straight to second or even to the cutoff, man, I don't think they were going to get Pelzer in second regardless, but he came up throwing to third, trying to catch maybe the runner coming home before he came home, or uh, it was it was not – that's not necessarily the correct throw. It was just the play that was made. First pitch swinging is Brandon Martin. That's going to short off the third baseman and roll into left field. And anything that's by the left fielder, Pelzer Reeves will score. Brandon Martin has his double. He's making his way to third and sliding safely is Martin. For the two-out RBI triple. There's an error on the score scoreboard. Board. I'm hoping that's from the error from Johnson previously because yeah, that, that ball it was is. hit hard. I mean, yeah. that is an RBI triple from Brandon Martin going back to that single from Pelza Reeves again. Yeah, there was trying to be a play at the plate and the center fielder threw the ball to the cutoff man who was in the proper improper position. He should be over by the mound. So that was why I think Pelzer was able to make it to second. And then Martin first pitch swinging rips one by the third baseman. The error actually going back to it now that we were clearing our head. It's going to be from the left fielder. Mm. So you're going to get a double from Brandon Martin. But an RBI hit nonetheless. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I guess I, I, the legs of the left fielder would make more sense than a incorrect <laughs> cutoff throw would, would be the error credited. But Brandon Martin turned on the Jets. As he was beginning to come around second, he he wasn't stopping regardless. I mean, I think even if, if the play, if the ball had been fielded cleanly and left by King, I think Martin was still going to come around second. I mean, about lost his balance. He was running so fast. Butler fouls off the 2-1. Makes it deuces wild here in the home half of the first inning. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And a five spot in the home half of the first inning for the Warriors. In game one of the three-game series, the final regular season series of the year. 2-2, Two -two, fouled right back off the netting. Good at bat from Braden Butler. We'll do it again, two balls and two strikes. And again, we were talking about it. The final regular season game, but hopefully not the final, final game here. At John Meals Field, the 2-2. Two -two is lifted down the right field line. It's going to be a tough play. Second baseman, Revis calls off Mosley. And a really nice play. I don't think that Mosley saw it. But yeah. Revis showing off the range. They'll make the play in foul territory for out number three. So that'll retire the side, but not before a five spot for the Warriors in the home half of the first inning. We head to the top half of the second. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. 
but you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank and Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Experience of the pros. Russell Dewitt Center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the pros. Russell Dewitt Center at Building Supply. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. Garrett West back on the mound for his second inning of work. Struck out the side in the first half of the first inning. It'll be Cooper King, West Carden, and Tristan Hill due up for the Wildcats. Reminder that today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. Whether you're having car trouble in an accident or you own a business and need a car moved, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. And, and, Christian, I want to say this. On a day like today where you get to honor six seniors on this squad, man, I've had the opportunity to, to call numerous senior days for Lee Scott Athletics from football, basketball, and baseball a few times. And, man, it, it really is something that – that I cherish. It's something that I love. It's something that I look forward to. I hate to see these guys go, but watching these guys play and, and really grow up in high school ball is just so exciting. And and some of these guys were here in my first season, at least Scott calling baseball before I became the official voice, man. And so getting to call some of these guys play baseball is it's just been an honor. First pitch misses up and away. Second one sides goes after the high fastball, evens the count. At one and one, and yeah, it's something you you bittersweetly look forward to. Again, not necessarily looking forward to seeing them leave, but you love to see them get recognized, get honored for their work and for their contributions, both on and off the field with Lee Scott. And it's something that you never get used to, whether you're you're a fan or or a parent or or even just us who again who have no emotional connection to these guys other than simply watching them play baseball. But but watching them grow up and doing what they've been doing for for a year and a half, two years now, it really, really is something special. And we we love to cherish them the way and the deservingly way that they should be as that two two fastball. We struck out the top half, struck out the side in the top half of the first. I'll take a guess on what he did there. He comes up empty was Tucker sides. So four batters, four strikeouts. Now early in the contest for Garrett West. It's just fitting for him to be on the mound today, man. It's game one of this series. You're coming down the stretch of the regular season, senior day. I mean, it's just it just makes sense for for this young man to be standing on the hump for the Warriors. I mean, he's he's your he's your go-to guy right now. And you've got numerous guys that you've count on, but as of right now, man, it's proven right for Jared Cook. Super King comes up empty on the first two fastballs, quickly in a hole, no balls. And two strikes, and it's you could you could say that that West will say more after this 0-2 pitch. Fouled straight back, make a play. It's gonna come back a little bit. Edens throws the mask perfectly, plants his face to the concession stand with his back facing the outfield. Really, really nice play as a catcher. He makes the catch for out number two. Yeah, that's strong, man. And and not something you see a whole lot at this level, but just pops straight up coming back towards this massive netting here at John Meals Field that all baseball fields have, of course. And and once you start getting closer and creeping closer, most catchers and players will start worrying about that wall and about the net. Ground ball. Too hardy at short. He'll throw over to Sam Jackson for out. Number three. We'll talk about that play a little bit more because, again, it's not something you see very often, but Edens did it perfectly. But the side is retired in the top half of the second inning. We head to the home half. Warriors in control, leading 5-0 to zero on the Lee Scott Sports Network. 
What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with with local attention. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 1045. We're through one and a half here at John Meals Field. Warriors in control with a five spot in the home half of the first. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network, wherever you're tuned in from. Thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. Warriors batted around in the first inning. Back to the top, it'll be Garrett West, Ethan Hardy, and Sam Jackson. Going back to that play from Lane Eddins behind the plate. Yes. Again, you have a ball hit straight up in the air. You're having to not only avoid the netting, but you know the ball hit straight up, has so much backspin that it almost looks like topspin on its way down. And it's going to make its way back into the field of play. So that ball initially looked like we would have had a play on it. But again, with the backspin that it had, making its way into the field of play, see the ability for Edens, again, like I was talking about, to have his face towards the concession stand and almost field it like a center fielder catching a fly ball. Really nice play behind the dish. Still Tucker sides on the mound as Garrett West watches the first pitch ball. And when it gets hung up that high in the air for that long, there's enough breeze out here today where the wind can kind of catch it and move it whichever direction, and you have to adjust for that as well. Not a lot of wind, but just enough. I mean, you look at the flag off to our right. It's barely moving right now, but it's more the gusts rather than anything, and all it takes is one of those for you to completely throw it off and go behind you, go in front of you, and, and miss the pop fly. But for Lane Edens, he did a wonderful job. First three pitches, miss in the dirt to Garrett West. So he's now seen seven pitches. All of them have missed the plate. The 3-0. That one misses upstairs as well. So Garrett West in his second plate appearance will make his second walk. Down to first. I think I'd walk Garrett West, too, with just the, the power that he's got, man, and the leadoff ability that he gives you. I mean, we talk about leadoff base runners all the time, and and you give Garrett West anything in the zone, he's going to go after it. Whether it's in play or not, that's a different story, but he's going to go after it and put pressure on your defense. And not that that was an intentional walk by any means, but Garrett West is just so – he's so talented, man. He really is. All these guys are, and one of those six seniors this evening – for the Warriors, excited to continue to, to highlight them as we go here today. West will be playing at Reed State next year as Easton Gregory comes in and runs for Garrett West. And he'll steal second standing up. And going back to, to Garrett West on the mound, you were talking about being his, his ace. That could have been something that was arguably found out early early this year where the Warriors were trying to find that that consistent arm and it was almost West that, that really separated himself and and made himself that number one guy so you love to see him going out and has really proven his dominance so far and then again at the plate just such a smart leadoff hitter 2-0 misses upstairs Easton Gregory with a head first dive in there safely and there it is again you get that leadoff walk three pitches later you have a runner on third looking Threatening and looking to add to that total. But going back to just, just the leadoff hitters, you want your smartest hitters to lead off games. Again, Quest has a little bit of power as well as that pitch. 
from Ethan Hardy is fouled. It'll be an even count two and two, but the ability for him to to see pitches, work at, work at bats, work counts, and you'll happily take your walk there as well. Just the ability to produce, produce some chaos on the bases. Hardy awaits the 2-2. Misses in the dirt. For a full count, Hardy with a single his first time up. Brought home the first run of the afternoon for the Warriors. Look down at third with Easton Gregory after stealing third. You know he did it properly when he's dirty, filthy from head to toe on that white jersey and white pants. A full count pitch. Chopped behind the plate. And you hear Coach Cook saying, you need to get, you got to get out of the box because mm -hmm. the ball was yeah. fair the very first bounce, but it had a, had a lot of backspin and danced its way foul down the third base line before it could get picked up. But and what Coach means by that is you can't be the one to decide whether that's a fair or foul ball. you got to go like it's fair every time. If you make contact, you got to go and let the home plate umpire make that call. The 3-2. Misses upstairs for ball four. So back-to-back -back walks to lead off the top half, or the bottom half, I'm sorry, of the second inning. It's just Lee Scott hitters, man, being heads up, paying attention, not taking bad pitches, not swinging at bad pitches. They take bad pitches all the time. They just don't swing at bad pitches. And, and look, while you're waiting for high-level competition, and no matter where you go, some of these guys going to play college ball, I mean, Let's say that's a, a strength that's so hard to develop the older you get. And so the fact that so many of these guys have that already, that's going to pay off dividends for him down the road. Hardy first pitch swinging. He'll make his way to second base. Standing up. As Jackson was taking all the way for a called strike one. And yeah, there's a difference between a hitter and a batter. And at times you have to be one or the other. There's different. You, anybody can go up there. And, and, just the swing, and just swing away <laughs> and be right. a hitter. But the ability to be a batter, see some pitches, make the pitcher work, that was something that our coach talked to us a lot about at the college levels. I mean, there's going to be times where, where you're not going to get anything good to hit, and you're just going to have to sit there and work a seven, eight, nine pitch at bat. And that's something that you can see these Lee Scott Warrior hitters you put up multiple times a game. It just continues to add to those stress pitches and the pitch count of the opposing arm on the mound. And, you know, I feel like you could almost interchange those terms where you were saying, you know, you can't, you have to be a, what, had to be a batter, not a hitter. Is that what you were saying? Where Yeah, there's just times where you're going to have to be one or the other. You can't yeah. just sit up there and be a hitter. You're going to have to sit there and, and watch pitches because right. you're not going to get a fastball down the middle every right. at bat. Yeah, no, I agree with that. The 0-2. Lifted straight into the heart of the infield. A little miscommunication between the middle infielders. Johnson at shortstop was camped under at Revis. Went all the way from the second base position and <laughs> did make the grab, but but again, the Johnson at shortstop in his regular position had to move was, two feet. Was yeah, was <laughs> camped under it. But hey, the an catch was out, made for out number one. Yeah, I, I mean it was just he was he didn't have to move, but about two or three feet to his left and was underneath it. And then yeah, second baseman Rivas came over. I mean made a made a heck of a grab. It was sort of an unnecessary play, but an out and out, and that's one away here in the inning. Sometimes it's like those those NFL guys that need one more catch to get their bonus or whatever. Maybe, well, hey, we are nearing the end of the season, so you never That's know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe Revis needed that little incentive bonus, had to make one more play, and wanted to get, wanted to get it guaranteed. As JD Burns awaits the one zero, fouls the straight back to even the count at one and one. Five nothing your score here at John Meals Field between the, the visiting Springwood Wildcats and the Lee Scott Warriors. Runners on the corners. No, I'm sorry. Runners on second and third following that stolen base a couple pitches ago. With one away, J.D. Burns wisely lays off that fastball. Wanted to go after it, but knew he couldn't do anything with it if he made contact with it. Corner infielders hugging their bases. Middle infield. About in their routine position. A lot of room to work with up the middle of the field. Fastball misses off the plate. Brings the count to three balls and one strike. Outfield very deep and also hugging the corners. Johnson and center field just about straight up. So a lot of room to work with in either gap as well. 
3-1 fouled off the mask of Lauderdale. Gives the thumbs up signal, so we'll do it. And it's full count. Three balls, two strikes, and one out. Reminder that Jake Cummings does stand in the on-deck circle for Lee Scott Academy. The 3-2. Lined over the second base bag. It's going to roll into center field. One run will score. Two runs will score. And J.D. Burns will make his way to second base following the throw from Johnson at the plate. So J.D. Burns following a sacrifice fly his first time up with a two-run single in his second. Well, you spoke about it, Christian. The, the outfielders were playing way back. They were playing way off in their position. Center fielder was way out there near that Lee Scott baseball sign. And if J.D. Burns went in either gap left or right, or just like he did, straight up the middle, it was going to be a base hit. It's exactly what he did. And the Warriors bring around two more. They lead 7 nothing here in the bottom half of the second. Jay Cummings, first pitch swinging, lifts one into center field. Johnson with the glasses gleaming will make the grab. J.D. Burns will tag and did so really wisely. Johnson caught that ball a little lackadaisically on his back foot. And maybe Burns, seeing, seeing the arm following his single, knew that he was going to be able to make it the extra 90 feet. And that's just one of those little things, paying attention, taking that extra base when it's given to you. So a productive out nonetheless for Jake Cummings as Lane Eddins digs in for his second plate appearance of the afternoon. Well, it's attention to detail by J.D. Burns, and it's a lack thereof in center field by Johnson. And those two things combined, you get that extra 90 feet, you get that extra base. And, yes, there's two outs now, but this if – if Lee Scott's able to get a single or get some sort of an error out of Springwood, it brings around another run where that wouldn't be the case if Burns is still standing on second base. 1-0. Ripped. Foul. Down the third base side. He was the count at 1-1. So annoying. I know. A 1-1 from sides to Edens. Chopped over at shortstop. Shortstop Johnson fires it over to first in time for out number three. It was a little bit of a questionable call. Umpire took his time but did make the correct call for out number three, so that'll retire the side, but not before the Warriors add two more to their total. We head to the top half of the third inning. Warriors leading seven to nothing on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Let's get back to the game. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. Sun beginning to set back to our left here at John Mills Field on the campus of Lee Scott Academy in Auburn, Alabama. He is Christian Griffin. I'm Jacob Goins with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic as we head to the top of the third. Warriors on top seven to nothing over the regional foes, the Wildcats of Springwood making the short drive up here today. Game one is underway as we get top of the third inning. Games two and three will be at Springwood tomorrow, which we will be on location for. So excited to make a quick trip down to Springwood. They always take care of us there. At the home of the Wildcats, Garrett West on the mound once again has 
four total strikeouts. Struck out the first four batters of the game, forced a fly out and a ground out to end the second inning. And it's always nice as a pitcher when you step out on the mound, Kristen, and you've got a seven nothing lead. Not that not that Garrett West needs any more confidence on the mound, but he's got a little bit more with seven runs tucked in his back pocket. Yeah, when your only concern on the mound is hoping your arm is still loose after a thirty minute break, I think I think you'll most most of the time you'll take that. If you're a mount if you're a man on the mound, as you mentioned, Garrett West, you give him, I mean, a run or two, and that seems like all he needs. Loads a fastball by the swing and Tristan Hill, who's up for the first time today, wearing number five in red. And swung after that one, too. West may just go three straight fastballs, see if, if Hill will go after the third one. He's done twice in a row. And West, working quickly now, rises and fires on the 0-2 and got a piece of it down the first baseline. Just dribbled foul by the first base bang. Everybody will reset. Had no balls and two strikes. And nobody so, out, nobody on. And that's something that we've seen West do such a good job of, especially when he gets in that rhythm. Gets the ball, gets on the rubber, and already is coming, set, and firing. Popped up towards the softball field, down the right field line, and out of play over the dugout of Lee Scott. And it's been five straight fastballs from Garrett West just tacking the third baseman, Tristan Hill, at 7-8-9, due up for Springwood here. The 0-2 to Hill, and... A short pop-up down the right side. Peltzer is able to field on the second base side and gets it to Sam Jackson for out number one. So shout-out Tristan Hill. He swung at the first two, wasn't really close, and then was able to get a bat on a couple of them and gets it to Peltzer Reeves, but he's able to make the play for out number one. Yeah, it's one of those after you see a couple of fastballs and even the foul-offs were weak contact. And that ground ball to second base is weak contact. The last thing you're wanting to do is speed up the bat of the hitter and bring in something soft and allow him to pull it and rip it fair over the third base bag. So Wes sticking with that fastball early. Gets Russell Lauderdale on a swing and strike one. He'll go back to it again on the outside part of the plate and a swing and strike two for the starting catcher this evening. For Springwood, he's the eight-hole hitter, C.J. Johnson in the on-deck circle. Here's the 0-2. Swing and strike three. One, two, and three for Garrett West. Give him five on the evening. And not a whole lot to it. And here comes head coach Jared Cook. We'll see. Should be should be the end of the day. For the senior Garrett West, and it is. He will jog off the mound to a big applause here at John Mills Field. Did his job. It's five strikeouts on eight. Of the nine hitters so far, a new pitcher comes in. We'll get you the information, name, number, and some data on him when we come back here on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. So a pitching change here at Lee Scott Academy. Garrett West, his day is done. He retired the first eight batters of the day for the Springwood Wildcats. And head coach Jared Cook said, that's enough. You did pretty well. We'll pull you out and, and replace you and you'll... So in the field somewhere, and Christian, you're looking at it now, kind of as Lee Scott's making some adjustments. New pitcher is Harrison Short, wearing number six. He delivers a first pitch sidearm swing and strike one to the nine-hole hitter, C.J. Johnson. Update the folks on what's happening after Garrett West in the field. Yes, Garrett West made his way to right field. So I believe that that will just replace him as Johnson comes up empty on the 1-1. One -one. McKay was not in the field, so I don't believe there will be any changes 
in the lineup. And with Garrett West starting and batting, he should still remain in the game. And rung up on a strike three call. Harrison Short comes in and takes care of business. He only needed one, and he got it. Springwood scoreless still. Lee Scott on top, seven to nothing. We head to the home half of the third. Stay tuned. You're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank & Trust. Member FDIC. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. 7 0 lead for Lee Scott Academy. We head to the bottom of the third in game one of the series between your Warriors of Lee Scott and the Wildcats of Springwood. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on Tiger Country 1045. Tiger Country 1045 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 1045. Here on the campus of Lee Scott Academy in Auburn, Alabama, sun is shining, beginning to set back behind our left shoulder. Umbrellas are out, and just a gorgeous April evening here in Auburn as Lee Scott Academy on top of their regional foes. Springwood, seven to nothing as we get to the bottom of the third. My broadcast partner is Christian Griffin. I'm Jacob Goins with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Appreciate you all being with us. It's brought to you by the Orthopedic Clinic. And as Pelzer Reeves digs in a reminder, senior day here at John Meals Field, celebrating the six seniors, Brandon Martin, Jack McKay, J.D. Burns, Lane Eddins, Jake Cummings, and Garrett West for the Warriors. And what a day to be able to go out and play for them, to be able to go out and watch and celebrate them and everything they've done here, both on and off the field, those accomplishments at Lee Scott Academy. As Peltzer Reeves, Brandon Martin, and Braden Butler should be the three due up for the Warriors. Here's the 102 Peltzer and takes a dropping called strike, is how we'll say that. 1 1 count, nobody out, nobody on, just underway, bottom half. Of the third should be a nicer should be a nice day tomorrow as well. About the same sunny, partly cloudy temperature as well. Pelts are hard hit ground ball to the shortstop, able to get down on it. Is Johnson throws over skies it. Good play at first, but he can't make the tag. Can Mosley? He had to go up for it, rebound style, and whip the glove around. But the hustle of Pelts or Reeves gets down to first base, and the Warriors have a leadoff base runner once again. Unfortunate for Johnson at short. He's made a really good play. Went down to a knee on the hard hit ball from Reeves, but the throw brought Mosley up into the air, and Pelzer able to avoid the tag, so he reaches on the E6. If the throw was straight on and accurate, it probably would have gotten him which is the reason for the error. So a leadoff base runner for the Warriors. Couple of step lead, and that throw gets all the way up by Martin. Peltzer will take off. He'll stand cleanly on second base, and Martin had to pretty much do a limbo type of effort to get out of the way. And he'll step back in with a 1-0 count. So now three straight free passes to lead off the inning, essentially. Two walks, and then the error. Warriors... Getting guys on, getting guys over, and getting guys in real early here. Already leading 7 0. Looking to increase that in the home half of the third. Martin shakes off a disagreed strike. He'll pop this one up in foul territory down the first baseline. Parks underneath it in foul territory, and Mosley makes the grab. 
for the first down of the inning. Brings up Brayden Butler, who flew out his first time up. He is in the nine hole for the Warriors. He does have that runner on second. It's Peltzer Reeves. Got on thanks to an error to start the inning and stole second base. So looking to try to bring him around. We'll see if Peltzer's aggressive from second to third. He wouldn't be the first runner today to do it. And there he goes. Hops on it down the left field line, tailing towards the wall, back at the wall, at the warning track, and makes the grab, does King. Peltzer was basically on third and had to hustle all the way back to second base. Took one for a ride, and Brayton Butler just couldn't get enough underneath. It needed a wind gust to get it over the wall out there in 300, and the second out of the inning is recorded. Yeah, barreled the ball all the way down the line. If the wall is at 290, that ball is clearing it as, as King. Made the grab with his hand on the wall. Had just a little too much top spin to keep it in the park. As West will watch that one get in the dirt outside. For ball one, gets away from the catcher Lauderdale, but he'll hold Peltzer Reeves over at second base. 1 0 count with two away. To the one hole, one spot hitter Garrett West, who got the start on the mound today. He'll watch that one go outside in the opposite batter's box as well for a 2-0 count. Had five strikeouts for the Warriors to start on senior day. Was replaced by Harrison Short, who came in and got the loan out in the top of the third, and Warriors have a 7-0 lead over Springwood. Here's the 2-0 to Garrett West. Jumps on it. Dribbler to the third base side, right in the gap. Third baseman Hill playing way over near the bag. Peltzer's going to come around, throw at the plate, not in time, and Reeves will stroll across home plate. It's 8-0 Lee Scott and give Garrett West an RBI, and the Warriors have a bigger lead. They've expanded it to 8-0 here in the third. As you mentioned, West didn't necessarily hit it too, too hard. Just perfectly placed in the 5-6 hole. Third baseman Hill was almost expecting Pelzer Reeves to steal because as soon as the pitch was thrown, he went to go cover third base. And almost like a first baseman holding the runner on where you have so much room on the right side, it almost worked in the same way down the left side. Again, we've talked about it. It doesn't matter how you hit it. You'll take it nonetheless. The first strike that Garrett West sees this afternoon, he rips for an RBI single. Brings up Harrison Short getting his first plate appearance of the day. Garrett West stands on second base. Big swing made a little foul tip into the glove. Did Harrison Short for what has become a rapid 0-2 hole. Two away. And they nothing lead for Lee Scott Academy. West has a Three to four step lead on second. He'll hang there. Can't drop it into the zone for sides, and it's a one-two count. Eight runs on six hits today for Lee Scott, and thanks to two errors in the field by Springwood, gives the Warriors a comfortable lead here at home. Another fastball way upstairs. To put twos across the board now. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs for Number six in white, Harrison Short in the right-handed batter's box. That way off his shoulder, kick and fire, waits for it outside. It's an even full count now at three balls, two strikes. Short is able to extend the inning. Sam Jackson in the three-hole. Stands in the on-deck circle to his right. And the right-hander steps off the mound. He'll reset. And if you're short, you're just sitting fastball right now. Again, was behind in the count, 0-2. Went to three straight off speed can't find the zone you're definitely sitting dead red on a fastball here short waits the payoff pitch and sat it went after it but couldn't get there and swing and strike three to end the inning but the Warriors tack on another one they lead eight nothing through three here at John Meals Field to the top of the fourth we go you're listening to Lee Scott Baseball on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic experience is from the pros Russell do it at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience is from the pros. Russell do it at Building Supply. 
What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. You're listening to the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, the official broadcast partner of Lee Scott Academy Athletics. It's Harrison Short back on the mound for head coach Derek Cook and the Lee Scott Warriors. They've got an 8-0 lead here at home. We've played three, and we start the top of the fourth inning as the Springwood Wildcats will have the top of the order due up for Springwood. And again, Garrett West, one of the seniors, got the start today, had five strikeouts on the mound and was brought in with what we would call a pitch count watch for head coach Jared Cook. He, he was by no means struggling, was Garrett West, but Harrison Short has come in. He got the one out he needed in the third frame and allowed the Warriors, who have put on eight total runs, it was five runs in the first, two in the second, one in the third and trying to keep a scoreless effort going in the field and have a chance to end it with the bats in the bottom half of this frame. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's just one of those things with a pitch count. I'm not I'm not sure exactly what that pitch count is, but I know you're allowed to finish the batter. So it might have just been something to where you were you were getting close to that line of maybe they're wanting to start him again tomorrow just to be able to to keep him like throwing a couple a couple bullpens. We'll see what that looks like tomorrow. But as you mentioned, it is short on the mound. And his only at-bat so far delivered a strikeout, looking to keep things going as we enter the, the top half of the fourth. And we got some movement in the field. We'll get you updated on that as we go. Short, a sidearm, sends it in the zone. Against Dylan Remus, 4 and one one count. Who struck out his first time up, was the first victim Against Garrett West to start the ball game. He'll watch that one creep up near the rest, but in the zone for a 1-2 count. Remus, Johnson, Mosley, the three do up. For Springwood here in the top half of the fourth frame, they trail your Lee Scott Warriors 8 to nothing. They're hitless and scoreless today. That's in the bottom part in the dirt inside. It's through the it's through the legs of late ends behind the plate. Steven it up at two apiece. Nobody out, nobody on. Visitor half of the fourth inning. Short kicks and fires in the sidearm and got a piece of it into the backstop again. We'll redo it at 2-2. All sorts of changes in the infield. Pelza Reeves now standing at third. Yeah, Pelzer at third. Braden Butler at short. Brandon Martin now stands at second. Sam Jackson still at first. J.D. Burns in center field. Garrett West. In right. Short. Gets him on the inside part of the plate. He watched it go. He disagreed with it. Did Dylan Rivas, but that'll be back-to-back -back strikeouts for him. And Harrison Short gets a strikeout as well. And one away in the top half of the fourth frame. And it is Smith Harkins in left field. Wire number 16 in white. Head coach Derek Cook not doing us any favors on the broadcast. Having to there's no even reason to scratch out our our uh, our little pictures here. We may as well just rewrite the whole defensive settings here. The 0-1 from short got him swinging on another strike to Eli Johnson. Makes it a quick 0-2 count. Short is not somebody that you can have a comfortable at-bat in. In the box, again, I mean, it's defensive swings all the way around. You're coming up empty, picking up another one there on that Frisbee slider. Drop third strike, toss down to first to get the out. But again, I mean, as a left-handed hitter, as a right-handed hitter, you can't sit on one pitch because every single one of them has so much movement and the velocity on the fastball and, and the the velocity difference on his two pitches so so hard to get comfortable in that box. I mean, again, as a right-handed hitter, you got that two seam coming in on your hands. That slider starts right at your hands and all of a sudden makes its way 
As a hard hit ground ball straight up the middle by Brandon Mosley, number 99, hit to Harrison Short. Wasn't able to get it cleanly, fumbled around, but able to pick it up and get it to first in time to get the out and get the side recorded. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It was clean for Harrison Short. Two strikeouts and a ground out. You'll take that any day. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning where the Warriors are up eight to nothing and look to expand on that lead when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Towards the Federal Credit Union. We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Eight nothing our score is Lee Scott. Back to bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. He is Christian Griffin. I'm Jacob Goins with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network as the five o'clock hour has passed. More and more people continue to roll in here to John Mills Field, and they are rolling up to a an impressive performance so far for Lee Scott Academy, doing pretty much what they've been doing the last couple of months, CG, just continuing to hit the ball, pull people scoreless, and just dominate on the baseball field. Yeah, again, it's just continuing to do what's in their DNA. I mean, the ability for, for Lee Scott to take advantage of of every single opportunity, both on the defensive side and the offensive side, take advantage of the mistakes and just continue to have that dominance again. Now, it, I mean, 19 games in a row that you've come up victorious, 11 straight games without surrendering a run. It's going to be a fun postseason, I'll tell you that. I mean, something you're not trying to look ahead too, too much, but just the the ability for this team where it feels like you had a couple question marks early on in the season and you've had the late half of March and then all of April just about to to fine-tune it, to tweak those things and, and to perfect your craft. So it's going to be really tough and really fun to see what this Lee Scott team can do in that postseason. As side still on the mound, he'll deliver two straight strikes to Sam Jackson, who's got a walk so far today. He also popped up his last time up in that third hole for the Warriors. Hit Jackson burns and coming to three due up for Lee Scott in the home half of the fourth frame. And the off speed is upstairs for Sam Jackson, and it's a one two count. The one, two, the Sam Jackson jumps on it, belts it right down the middle, and it lands for a base hit in and out of the glove in center field by Johnson, and Jackson will hold up at first base and another leadoff base runner for Sam Jackson. Looks like me with an eight iron just flushed it straight down the middle in the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to see if you had any comment about that. Yeah, it looks like you're if I was able to flush an eight iron on the – on the par three when you're saving double. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, my scrambling skills are on point. I may be saving bogey or double bogey, but I can scramble with the rest of them. As good as that, is that something you want to, to admit out loud? Or, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll admit it. There ain't no, I just means you're a no scramble hiding. partner. That's all it means, right? I Absolutely. Mean, so, any invite to a golf tournament you want to give, <laughs> I, I can scramble. I, can I get you off the tee? Not really. Can I put? Yeah, sometimes. He can announce your shot. I mean, that's cool enough. I, I could. Side, right? Yeah, I could do that. You need you need me to hit one out of the 10-feet grass off the right side of the green on the downslope going towards a pond? I got you. And the Warriors will bring in a 
Pinch runner for Sam Jackson. Bo King will step in wearing number 10 for Lee Scott. Nobody out. Runner on. Thanks to the single by Sam Jackson to get things going. J.D. Burns steps into the right-handed batter's box. And again, no, I'll give I'll give the flowers when they're when they're needed. This is this weekend's the best I've seen you play. So I will. I, what? <laughs> Just wait till baseball season's over and it's summertime. I might not have to give you strokes. Is that what we're saying? That's, I'm hoping so. <laughs> we're gonna get to that point eventually. First pitch to J.D. Burns was a hopper off the home plate for ball one. Sides peeks back at first. He'll kick and fire in. Burns hops on it, belts it down the third baseline, out past the outstretched arm of Hill. Runner's going to come around. Bo King coming in, play a third. Slide is made, and he should be safe, waiting on a delayed call, and it's finally called safe as J.D. Burns hopped on one again, and it was just a rocket down the third baseline. Give him... Give him the single. He'll get around to second. And runners on second and third with nobody out. Warriors active once again with the bats in hand, CG. Hill at third, again, was almost on top of the bag. I'm not sure how Burns did it, but still managed to squeak it past his glove and keep it fair. Two runners now in scoring position. J.D. Burns with a sacrifice fly, a single, and a double to his name so far. Popped up down the first baseline in foul territory by Jake Cummings in no man's down. land. Gets down into foul territory as two came on for Springwood. They were booking it over there towards the foul line. Just couldn't make it. And it is a no one count now for Jake Cummings. The 0 1 to Cummings. He'll lay off of that one on the outside. What has become an 0 2 hole? Nobody out runners on second and third. With Lane Eddins in the on deck circle for Lee Scott. Cummings has an RBI single already today. Would love to make it a couple of more here with an 8 0 lead for the Warriors. Awaits the 0 2. It's inside. Popped it up in the infield on the right side. Second baseman Reeves get, Revis gets underneath it and is able to make the grab for out number one. And it's that awkward time of the afternoon. We're approaching 5.30 here, and with the direction of John Mills Field, that sun is staring straight down at the second baseman, Rebus for Springwood. But he's able to concentrate, get underneath it, block out the sun a little bit with the glove, and then it will eventually make the grab for out number one. Yeah, it's one of those plays that you, you think is a routine play, but just about at this hour adds a little bit more to it. We have to completely wait for it to for the grab to be made but as you mentioned did a good job blocking the blocking the sun with his glove and able to make the catch for out number one. First pitch is a ball second pitch is a strike two lane Eddins to make it a one one count one's all over the place now one ball one strike and one out to lane Eddins Runners on second and third. The 1-1 one, one to Eddins. He'll stay off of it outside. Gets away from the catcher. Everybody's going to advance. Here they come to home. Throw is in time, but didn't make the tag. And Bo King is going to be here. Did they call it out? Did I miss it? No, the ball, uh, oh, the bad throw from the catcher rolled all the way up to the pitcher's mound. It was completely blocked by I was blocked. I couldn't by us, see it. But Apologies. I see the first baseman okay. mound with the baseball. Yeah, I couldn't see that. Apologies. It totally looked like the pitcher came in and just caught it and just stood there and didn't make a play. So apologies on that one, folks. So it gets by the pitcher. And Bo King comes around to score. It's 9 nothing. Lee Scott off of a pass ball. And ends up base running again for the Warriors. Hopped on it. Into left. Eddins back towards the wall. Into the warning track against the wall. And makes the grab with the left hand on the wall. Throws it in. Runner will tag. And another run will score. It is 10 nothing. Lee Scott here in this fourth frame. Lee Scott appeared to celebrate a win. Springwood was confused, but I believe it is called after that. Just wanted to make sure we had our confirmation <laughs> correct, and we do. So give it a, how about that, a walk-off fly-out RBI for Lane Eddins. 
The walk-off sacrifice fly missed a home run <laughs> by about yes. two, two, yes. about two feet, two or three feet. And you'll take the sacrifice fly. You'll take the RBI. Just about a walk-off home run, a run rule off home run, you could say. But Warriors extend that win streak to twenty. Now, I mean, absolutely remarkable, and yet another shutout performance, both from Garrett West and Harrison Short on the bump. 10 nothing. Lee Scott, your final score. They score those 10 runs on eight hits and two errors from Springwood, and not to mention the shutout and a hitless game as well. A combined no-hitter between Garrett West and Harrison Short for what that's worth in four innings of play. A win is a win. And we'll take it nonetheless. Lee Scott wins 10 to nothing here on Senior Day. We'll come back for the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. We'll talk about this game a little bit. We'll talk about the seniors and then hopefully get head coach Jared Cook and some of those seniors on the broadcast as well. All that coming up on the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show on Tiger Country 1045. Bending, stretching, we'll walking. We'll talk about simple this moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing. Located at 615 Opelika Road. Four Kings Federal Credit Union. All grown and never we love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Experience the challenge from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience the Trump of Bronx. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 1045. The Warriors take game one over the Wildcats. Lee Scott defeats Springwoods 10 to nothing here at home on Senior Day. Ten runs on eight hits and two errors on Springwood. And the Wildcats were held scoreless and held hitless by your Lee Scott Academy Warriors. He is Christian Griffin. I'm Jacob Goins with you on the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. The Orthopedic Clinic is East Alabama's go-to center for orthopedic care with locations in Auburn and Opelika to better serve you on the web at the OrthoClinic. Com. Well, Christian, uh, it's another great game. And, and look, it may not be a full seven-inning game, but Lee Scott, when you're run-rolling people, what do you tell them if you're head coach Cook? I mean, you, we were talking about it during the break. You're taking care of business. You put up 10 runs and eight hits in four innings of play. You also didn't allow a hit or a run. I mean, I know it's not what you want, and you'd probably like to see some seven-inning ball games, but, man, you can't complain when you're doing this in region play. No, you really can't. Again, you're doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. And while you're doing that, you're surprising yourself at the same time with your ability to continue to do it. Again, we've talked about it's hard to win games. It's hard enough to get a win streak. When you've hit double digits and you're now at 20 straight games, I mean, you're, you, are, you are clicking on all cylinders, all four aspects of the game. You're doing correct. You've seen it in every single game, too. You've seen it on the mound. You've seen it at the plate. You've seen it in the fielding. I want to know the fielding percentage for all of these guys again because, I mean, if you see – in error on the scoreboard on the column of Lee Scott, you're surprised. Much yes. less, I don't think you've seen two or three at all in a game. 
And I'll, I'll, I'll keep that commentator's jinx off of you there, and I'll say that for you. But <laughs> again, just the ability to continue to win games. Baseball is hard. It is hard to win games. It's hard to, to rally like you've been doing. It goes back to the seniors that we've talked about. We've celebrated them today, but having those guys that you, you can rely on, you can lean on, knowing in games like this where you're supposed to do it, but it's hard enough to actually go out and execute, and, and those seniors did that today. Brandon Martin wearing number five, Jack McKay wearing number nine, J.D. Burns wearing number 12, Lane Eddins wearing number 13, Jake Cummings rocking the 15, and Garrett West, your starting pitcher today, rocking number 19. Those are your seniors on this squad. And uh, I was mentioning, and we're going to get head coach Jared Cook and a couple of these seniors on the postgame show here coming up shortly, but uh, I was talking during the game about just what it means for, and you were as well, about what it means for these guys to to be on this team, to have been here for a long time, and and to be the guys you fall back on in region games like this tomorrow when you go on the road to this Springwood team where you're going to try and take the series and hopefully try to sweep the series and then postseason play a week from now. These guys have built this thing, and these guys – all have a major impact. Brandon Martin hitting the ball and his base running. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. I mean, he turns a single into a triple if you're not careful. He's been a huge impact on this team. Jack McKay, when he comes in on the mound, he's dynamite, man. He's somebody that Jared Cook, the head coach, Elise Scott, relies on as a starter and out of the bullpen. And he's been doing that for a long time here wearing the red, white, and blue. J.D. Burns and Late Eddins, those guys step in and you can rely on them with the bat in their hands, not to mention those guys when they put on the catcher's gear and they step behind home plate no matter who's on the mound and don't make very many mistakes. Lane Eddins and talking about him behind home plate, Jake Cummings and Garrett West, two guys that you can put on the mound, put the bat in their hands or put them in the field if you have to and they're going to make the right play. They're going to make the right decisions and Here's the thing. You've never seen any of those guys lose their cool. None of them have lost their cool, gone off, right, gone super, super emotional in a bad way. Emotions aren't bad. I'm just saying lost it on an umpire or lost it on another player or on their head coach. You don't see that from this crew. They're very, very mature. They're very respectful. You're going to hear that when we get them on the show in just a second. This has been a really special group to be a part of. It definitely has. And going through the list, again, they each contribute in different ways that really make this team a whole. Again, when you're not necessarily clicking on every single aspect, you can rely on a couple of these guys to get you a big hit or to go out and pitch a scoreless inning when you when you started to to steal that momentum or the ability to go out there and and just deliver. And that's something that is is so it's it's, it's something that you forget about. It's not necessarily the things that go noticing, but again, just relying on those seniors is really critical. For the rest of the season and going into the postseason. Christian's going to go grab head coach Jared Cook and a couple of seniors. We'll take a quick break, come back, and have them join us here on Tiger Country 104.5. This is the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. The Orthopedic Clinic is East Alabama's go-to center for orthopedic care with locations in Auburn and Opelika to better serve you. You can find them online at theorthoclinic.com. When we come back, a couple of seniors from Lee Scott Academy and head coach Jared Cook join us on the postgame show as the Warriors take down the Springwood Wildcats by a score of 10 to nothing. They take game one of the series here at home. They'll join us when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Home Brody Member Owned. 
We love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Experience is from the pros. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience from the Frost. Russell do it center at Building Supply. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott Baseball Station is Tiger Country 1045. On Senior Day here at John Mills Field, Lee Scott Academy Baseball takes down Springwood in Game 1 of the series. 10 to nothing in Game 1. They'll have Games 2 and 3 tomorrow on the road at Springwood. I'm Jacob Goins with the voice of the Lee Scott Warriors on the Orthopedic Clinic post-game show as we are awaiting head coach Jared Cook and a couple of the seniors to make their way over to the broadcast booth after a nice win over Springwood, a scoreless game against Springwood, a hitless game, a no-hitter that was thrown combined between Garrett West and Harrison Short as well. It's just an impressive day on Senior Day. We've highlighted those six seniors, and we'll get a couple of them on as we go. We'll start with Garrett West, who started today's game, who is one of those seniors, had five strikeouts on the day on the mound. And, Garrett, you probably wanted to go a little bit longer, and you were rolling, man. You kept getting people out, ground out, strikeouts, everything. And then here comes Coach Cook strolling out there, and he yanked you, man. What the heck was that about? Well, you know, <laughs> we're we're big over here and in, in, into arm care, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pitching again on Friday, so we wanted to keep my pitch count pretty low. So I, I stuck around 30 pitches, and I know I had – I threw some – you know, before the game and in between each inning and those count up pretty quickly. So we just wanted to keep a pitch count low today. What's it like for you to come out here? You not your first time starting this season by any means, but you get the start on such a big day where it is senior day here at least, Scott, and, and you're one of those seniors, you're one of the senior leaders. What's it mean for you to come in here and get the start in such a big game on senior day here in front of the home fans? Well it's just a, it's just honestly a, a big honor and, and I respect, you know, everybody who who helped helped out with that decision and it just really means a lot to me that uh, that I can come out and everybody trusts me enough to you know throw strikes and do my job on the mound. If you had a a word or a phrase that that you would describe all of your guys, all the seniors that that the leaders that you've helped build this program into what it is uh, this year and today, what would that word or that phrase be that that you would rely on for those guys? Um, you know, I'd probably say trustworthy. Honestly, I think. Um, I can trust them behind me to make plays and I can trust them in the box to to do their jobs and, and you know, be selfless and, and work together as a team. So I think my word would be uh, trustworthy. Well, man, you're doing a great job and we appreciate you joining us and, and get, you guys keep it up. You've got two more on the road tomorrow at Springwood, a couple of more down the stretch here in the regular season and then postseason play coming up. I know you guys are excited. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Appreciate you hopping on. That is Garrett West who got the start today. One of those six seniors joining us on the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. He'll take the headset off and trade it with one of his senior counterparts and number 12 in white, J.D. Burns. J.D., man, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. We appreciate you being with us on the radio, yes, man. Yes, What's I was asking uh, – Asking Garen, and we'll ask you, what's it mean to get out there and play in front of these home fans on senior day? One of the six on this squad. It's amazing. Um, just they come out every day. Support support's crazy here at uh, Lee Scott, but it's just it's a true. It's 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 a privilege. It's a, it's a big privilege, and I'm blessed every day that I can come out here and compete. I look at you as like a utility player. I mean, you can play catcher. Yeah. You can you can hop in yeah. the field. And, man, you've really grown with the bat in your hands this season. I mean, we've been around for a couple of years. And 
And man, your hitting has really taken that next step. What's it been for you? What what's what's been the main cause of that? Is it confidence? What is it that you've just been able to step up and really rip the ball a couple of times? It's it's simplifying, just just being able to just go up there, not think, and just trust in my mechanics, my hands, throw my hands, just being able to trust that I know what I'm doing when I step in the box, and that's just really been a big thing. Big thing. But, you know, I get here early, got to stay late, got to get the extra work in. But it's just really just simplifying things has been the big key for me, not trying to do too much. I feel like confidence is something, it's a big word in baseball. Again, that's something that that half of your talent kind of results around is is being confident both at the plate and on the mound. Two for two this afternoon with a sacrifice fly. How much has Coach Cook has installed in you and in this team and just being able to be confident, being yourself? And I guess a, a second part of the question what does he do to keep y'all's mind focused on on every single pitch, every single at bat, knowing that you know the win streak is is something that's not avoidable. Like obviously, it's in your brain, but being able to to remain focused and not necessarily look at the big picture, but take it by every pitch and every at bat. Um, I think the big key to that is keeping us on our toes every day. We're in and out of here every day, working working really hard. And it's just that's been the big key. I feel like he, I mean he stays on us, and it's just it's. I think that's what helps the most is because he knows how good we can be and we're not there yet. And it's just we got to keep building and climbing. And once playoffs come around, it's going to be it's going to be hard to stop us. It's let me really ask hard. you. Let me ask you one more thing before we let you get out of here. What are you going to miss most about playing baseball at Lee Scott Academy? That's that's a really good question. I, 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 I'd, I'd be oh. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't just coming out here every day and just having the privilege yeah. to play baseball yeah. and wear the red, white, and blue. That's a great answer, man. That's a fantastic answer. J.D. Burns, one of the six seniors, man. We appreciate you hopping Thank on the postgame show with yes, us, sir. man. That's the Orthopedic Clinic postgame show. And J.D. Burns joining us on the on the show here on Tiger Country 104.5. And we appreciate him and Garrett West for joining us. And now we'll hand off the headset to head coach Jared Cook. I'll get a couple of NCG. We'll get a couple of questions in as well. That's a that's a heck of an answer by by a young high school baseball player. Coach, I don't know if you heard that as you put the headset on. I asked JD, I said, what's going to miss most about playing baseball at least Scott Academy? And the young man's answer said, I'm going to miss coming out here every day and having the privilege to play baseball. Have you heard any type of an answer like that in your coaching career? Because in my young broadcasting career, I've never heard a kid say that. Well, honestly, uh, we've got some really good kids here, Jacob. Uh, you know, good parents that raise them the right way. And uh, like like J.D. said, I think he loves the game along with the rest of our guys. And, you know, that's what they'll miss most is just coming out here and being together. Uh, but I wouldn't expect anything else uh, from, from J.D. for sure. Six seniors on this team. We'll get to the game in just a second, but you got to honor them before the game. You get to honor them throughout the rest of this season and into the postseason here really, really shortly. What have those guys meant to you? I know this has been a, a season for you kind of getting accustomed here and trying to figure everything out with this team, and you guys have done a fantastic job. What have those six guys done for you here in this season at least, Scott? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big deal to send them out the right way, if you will, uh, and honor them you know, on their night. And I think the biggest thing, is uh, I think we we've, we've grown together. You know, there's there's been some hardships and there's been some things changed, but they've rolled with the punches. You know, and they've adjusted and I've adjusted to them. And I and I think that's the beautiful thing about you know the coach and the player relationship is you get to know them, they get to know me, we get to love each other and we get to grow together. You know, and and just use the game of baseball to do that. And that's that's what makes it special for sure. You mentioned the word in the dugout a few moments ago, consistency. What what does that mean to you? What does that mean to this team and being able to to be consistent? And again, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing against teams like this that you have the upper hand against. But again, it's still baseball. It's a humbling game. What does consistency mean to to this team and being able to do everything the right way? It's everything. Uh, you know, it's good habits. It's, it's trying to stay in those good habits. And, um, you know, the biggest thing is, is playing – Really good baseball at the right time. So uh, they they probably don't like it when I bark at them a little bit, you know, when I'm trying to stay on top of them, of, of fundamentally staying sound, you know, playing good, clean baseball, uh, mentally being in a good place. And that's what that's what I challenged them with after the game is, you know, first couple innings, I think we were there, the intensity was there, and then it just kind of died down. And I just challenged them tomorrow to come out tomorrow and really put together a full mental effort, you know, and, and uh, mentally be in the game 
um, for for however long you know we're playing. So uh, and they'll respond. They they're they're a good group and they'll respond the right way. Something that we've talked about on the broadcast the entire year is those four aspects of baseball: on the mound, at the plate, in the field, and on the base pass. Something that that we've highlighted the entire year is the ability for Lee Scott to move runners on, get them over, or get them on, get them over, get them in is almost a, a simple mentality for everything. But what does that mean to your coaching staff and those guys being able to to get guys on, not necessarily stacking hits together when you don't necessarily have to, but you had five free passes today. Every single one of them came around and scored. What does that mean to you and your coaching staff, the ability to move guys on, especially when it's going to come down to that postseason where every single run is going to mean that much more? Yeah, I just think it shows the the unselfishness of our group. Uh, I think it shows that they do care about each other, and, and they'll just do whatever it takes to win, whether it's getting hit by a pitch. I mean, we've been hit by – I can't even tell you. We've been hit by so many pitches, and and uh, we've taken our free passes, you know, when they give them to us. And, and they know uh, once we do get on base, uh, the percentages go up, especially that leadoff guy on, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it, it, it took probably several weeks, maybe about mid midpoint of the year. And, and I think they finally just realized we're going to play for each other. And however we get it done, it doesn't matter who gets the glory. And uh, they, they're the ones that have bought into that for sure. Head Coach Cook joining us here in the Orthopedic Clinic Post Game Show. Senior Day has come and gone. You've gotten a win in your region. You've got the doubleheader coming up tomorrow, and then the postseason is literally right around the corner. How's your team feeling? How are you guys feeling going in physically, mentally, emotionally going into the back stretch and and really the home stretch of the regular season before postseason play gets underway? Yeah, I think we're in a good place. You know, uh, it's just one game at a time. You know, as hard as it is for them, I know, to, to look ahead and, and be excited about the opportunity we have. Uh, and I get it. I understand. So, you know, we fight that as coaches to, to try to stay locked in on one pitch, you know, and one play at a time. But, um, you know, we've got a we've got an older group. We've got an experienced group by this point. I mean, we're we're late in the year. So uh, it's just about going out and 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 daily doing the things that we need to do to continue to be successful. And. You know, we've added some games that are really going to challenge us coming up. So uh, we, we do that so we can we can definitely continue to uh, stay solid and, um, you know, face some good arms, face some good hitters at the plate and just just see good baseball. So uh, we're, we're heading in the right direction. We just we got to take it one game at a time. Hey, Coach Jared Cook joining us here on the Orthopedic Clinic Post Game Show. Coach, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. That's head coach Jared Cook here with us on Tiger Country 104.5 as we wrap it up here in the Orthopedic Clinic Post Game Show. We always appreciate coach and players' time. We'll take one quick break, come back, and wrap it up after this on Tiger Country 104.5. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Lee Scott Academy victorious over Springwood here in game one of the series. A senior day W, if you will, for the Warriors over the Wildcats. I'm Jacob Goins with you in the Orthopedic Clinic post game show. Alongside me in the broadcast booth is Christian Griffin, and we were joined by Garrett West and JD Burns, the two of the six seniors on this squad today. And head coach Jared Cook joined us as well. And man, you can tell those two represent the senior class so well. Wish we had time to get all six of them on here, and, and hopefully we can continue to get some of those guys on as we go throughout the rest of the season but um I mean just Christian you can hear it in their voice and all three of them the two players and the coach I mean it's the confidence is there they're trying not to look too far ahead and they're really trying to appreciate what they're doing here because it's really special what this Lee Scott team is in right now it is and first off 
I don't know how you ask a senior what their favorite spot or their favorite thing about playing their last game here. So I don't, that got me emotional and I'm not even playing. So credit to you, I guess, but what an answer by JD Burns. That's again. a hell of I mean, an answer, man. A, the, the maturity, the ability to understand that, that these things do not last forever. And you truly are in the greatest time of your baseball career. Even if you're playing at the next level, high school baseball is second to none. There's absolutely nothing, nothing to compare it. I mean, to be able to go out, to school, come out and practice with your brothers. It's it, it truly is something that you will not forget for the rest of your lives. But again, those two guys, again, leaders of of the senior class, leaders of this team, and again, there there's some humble confidence. That's I think that's the perfect way to describe it. I would agree it is, with that. It is not arrogance whatsoever. They realize that they are doing things the right way, but they're also realizing, hey, as as something we've talked about the entire time, this game is so humbling. You have to continue to do those little things the right way. And the just the quote of of the privilege of playing baseball. That's the word that stuck out to me. Privilege. That it is not something you have to go out and play. You get to go out and play. And, and it's not makes, something that everybody else gets to do. No, and it doesn't get no, nobody else gets to do it. And again, when you have that mentality of it's a privilege to go out and play this game, that's something that that it honestly answers some of the questions that we've had of, you know, how does Lee Scott continue against weaker or lesser opponents to continue to come out and do what they need to do right privilege the privilege to play baseball today taking every single game like it's your last i mean that that's that literally sums up the entire season sums up the win streak in itself just the privilege to go out here wear the red white and blue and play at a beautiful john meals field a beautiful school a beautiful campus Man, we hope it's not the final game here at, at John Meals Field. I don't think it will be, man. Just a, an instinct. I just don't think it will be. I think we're going to be fortunate enough to get some 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 playoff series here. At least Good one, word. hopefully. Fortunate hopefully. enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, J.D. Hey, J.D. taught me well, man. Shout out J.D. Burns. Well, Brandon Martin. want to shout these guys out again one more time. Brandon Martin, J.D. Burns, Blaine Eddins, Jake Cummings, and Garrett West. The six seniors on this squad who who – are just uh, such great representatives of this team, of this school, and and man, we appreciate them. And and it's an honor for uh, for us to be to be a part of this and to be able to call their games. And and man, it's not done here. I I just I refuse to believe it's done here. It's not done for this team. They're gonna make some noise in the postseason, but the regular season is not done just yet, Christian. We will be back tomorrow. Not here. We'll be on the road at Springwood for games two and three for this series. As Lee Scott gets game one here today, ten to nothing. Quick expectations tomorrow. You'll be there on air time about 4 15 4 20 first pitch set for 4 30 at springwood tomorrow for a doubleheader i think it's just the exact same thing consistency you expect results you expect this team to come out and perform the way that they've been performing especially in games like today where you heard the coach cook got onto his guys in a 10 to nothing ball game a 10 to nothing run rule you hear the head coach critiquing some things and he said they didn't necessarily love that he was barking at them so you fully expect them to come out firing, come out focused, come out knowing the things that they need to do and the expectation that they have to get those things done. In their final regular season true true series with their with region. their region mm-hmm. with their region trying to to look ahead at that either that one or that two seed you Really, look, you're really liking where you're at if you're Lee Scott. And I misspoke. Apologies. Game time is set for four okay, tomorrow. Was... Yep, I misspoke on that. Apologies. So you'll be on the air about 345, yep. 350. Uh, first pitch set for four and a doubleheader at Springwood tomorrow. That'll be right here on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic on Tiger Country 104.5. Lee Scott victorious on senior day. 10 to nothing. Taking game one over Springwood. Games two and three tomorrow here on Tiger Country 104.5 on the home of the Lee Scott Sports Network. From my broadcast partner, Christian Griffin, I'm Jacob Goins. Until next time, stay safe and go Warriors. Lee Scott Academy Baseball has been presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Follow LSA Action here on Tiger Country 104.5.